Today in our 2013 Hyundai Veloster, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the Kurt Custom Fit Class 1 trailer hitch. This offers an inch and a quarter opening. The part number is C11254. Now here's what the hitch is going to look like once you get it installed on your vehicle. As you can see, it's got a pretty clean look. It becomes visible just inside this first or second airfoil, kind of on both sides. This, this driver's side, it's a little more visible, it comes across, but with this round tube design, it's pretty aesthetically pleasing. We've also got one little plate that's gonna come down here and it'll be visible from outside of the car. This is a class one hitch, so you're gonna be slightly limited. Um, you wanna be sure that any cargo carrier you get is gonna be rated for a class one hitch. And we're gonna be limited to a two bike rack capacity. Now, we can use a four bike rack, that's not an issue, but you wanna limit the number of bikes you put on that to two. This offers us a 100 pound tongue weight rating, a 1,000 pound gross trailer weight rating, and then of course you're also gonna to need to refer into the Velocitor's owner's manual, see what kind of ratings they give it, and use whichever of those are the lowest. We got our safety chain connection points here on each side. Now, typically with a class one hitch, you're not gonna do a lot of trailer towing. This is gonna be your bike racks, small cargo carriers, things like that. These can be really handy when it comes time to strap the bikes together or maybe give some additional support for our hitch by strapping the, the rack up into our safety chain connection points. Also, as you see here, standard hitch pin and clip are gonna be included for you. There's plenty of locking devices and things like that available either with the bike rack or separately. If you choose, you wanna lock that up. Now let's go over a couple of measurements that'll help you in selecting a ball mount cargo carrier or bike rack. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the outer edge of our bumper, we're looking at about four and three quarters of an inch. From the ground to the inside edge of our receiver tube opening on the top, we've got about nine inches. Now the first step in the installation is gonna be to remove the two nuts, one located here and one located just in front of it that's holding our heat shield in place. Now as you can see, we've removed the exhaust hanger here to allow the exhaust down slightly. It doesn't specify doing that in the instructions, but we thought it'd just be a little easier for you to see if we move that down. So we're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket and just pull both the nuts off. Now with those removed, they want us to bend our heat shield down slightly. Let's bring that down and out of the way a little bit. Now we're gonna remove the black plastic plug located here on the passenger side and also the one located over here on the drivers. Now we're going to use a half inch drill bit and we're going to enlarge the hole that's just behind where we just removed that plug. Now with our hole enlarged, let's take a look at the three attachment points we're going to use for our frame. One of our 7 16 carriage bolts will come out of the larger hole here. One of them is going to come out of the hole that we just enlarged. And the other is going to come out of this hole where we removed the plastic plug here on the driver's side. Now here you can see we've threaded our fish wire onto our bolt. That's going to go right up in the hole just like that. We're also going to slide one of our spacers on. We're going to push that up inside. And then you'll notice we'll be able to pull that bolt down. And with it being a carriage bolt and that spacer, we'll prevent it from turning and allow us to get our hitch nice and secure. Now we'll do the same thing here on the passenger side with the exception of our rearmost hole here. Now in this hole, we're gonna use a standard pull technique. We'll just put our fish wire in. There we go, now with that pulled through, 
we'll put a spacer block on and we'll also thread our 7 16 inch carriage bolt right up onto that. Now this time we feed the block in first and then our bolt. Then we'll just gently pull. And we can guide it right down out of our hole there. Now for our last connection point, it's gonna be in that large hole that we removed the rubber plug from. We're gonna use the reverse pull method there. So just like before, the bolt will go in, then the block's gonna go in, and we just pull it back through. Just like that. Now we're gonna leave our wires connected, just as guides to get our hitch up into place without pushing them in. Now with all of our hardware in place, we're gonna raise our hitch up into position. It's a good idea to get an extra set of hands in this, just cause it can be a little bit awkward. As we do, we're gonna run each of the fish wires through the appropriate hole, and that's gonna help guide our bolts down through our hitch so we don't push them back up into the frame. All right, buddy. As you can see, we'll have to come this way to come around our exhaust hanger. Kind of pull our wires as we go. Then we'll pull those bolts right down through. Now we'll pull one of the wires off. And we're going to use one of the flange nuts to help hold this side up into place for us. So with that one started, let's go over here to the driver's side and get this one started. And we're just gonna just leave those hand tight for now. Then we'll get our last one put on the passenger side. All right, with the three of those loosely installed, we'll move to our last connection point. Now through our tow loop here on the back, we're gonna slide the larger carriage bolt and the larger spacer. And then that's gonna get a flange nut on the other side here. Now we'll go through and snug up all of our hardware. Then we'll go through and torque all of our hardware down to the specifications that you can find in your instructions. And with everything torqued down to specification, let's replace the two small nuts that we removed for our heat shield. With that re-secure, as you notice, the hitch is going to be sandwiched in between that heat shield and the frame, so that's a non-issue. If you had removed them, go ahead and reattach your, your exhaust hangers. That's about it. We're ready to load up our bikes or hook onto our little trailer or whatever the case may be and head on down the road. So that's going to complete today's installation of the Kurt Custom Fit Class 1 Trailer Hitch, part number C11254 on our 2013 Hyundai Veloster.